Alright, welcome back to iPhone settings that will save your battery life and improve your mindfulness. Next up for us is privacy. Location services cut pretty much everything that you believe shouldn't track your location in the first place. Only allow access while using the app related to maps, weather, parking, fitness or money transactions. Also note that not everything needs precise location. For example, I do have it on Instagram. You know, when I put my location on, it doesn't need my precise location where I am right now. It's just going to give you a rough area. It's not precise location. You only need that for turning off, leaving on for maps. Everything else can and should be set to never. For example, why would camera want your location, you might ask. Having it set to never won't store location coordinates within your photos. Trust me, you don't want that if you use social media and you're not a fan of stalkers online. And yes, we're not finished yet. Scroll all the way down to system services. Welcome to our battery saving jackpot. Emergency calls and find my iPhone should be kept on. Motion, calibration and distance can be an option on as long as you have an Apple Watch or like to track your daily steps. Trust me, everything else with product improvement over here below can be set off, especially significant locations, which kind of freaks me out. You want to clear your history here, make sure to do that and turn off your significant locations now. Although Apple does say significant locations are end-to-end -end encrypted and cannot be read by Apple, honestly, I wouldn't have it anywhere out there in the cloud, so I have it off. You may say, wait Chris, this looks like some important system settings. Will this affect my iPhone experience? From my experience, I had this phone for quite a while. No, it won't affect your experience. Just trust me that turn them off. If something feels like it doesn't work properly, come in, turn them back on. But I'm telling you, it's, it's just going to work. Trust me. Unless you have a home kit, you can turn it on. But if you don't, turn it off. Let's just jump back to privacy and let's go back to tracking. There we go. Don't allow apps to track you. You know, who, who would want that? And scroll all the way down to analytics and improvement. Turn everything here off. Also do the same for Apple advertising. You know, you don't want personalized ads. You don't want ads in general, but this is just not going to track you and you're not going to be sending out information. All right, next up, App Store. Although app updates off would save your energy, I personally keep it on. Don't bother updating my apps manually every once in a while. I'd rather have them on. And you want to have video outplay off and in-app ratings and reviews off. So once you open the app, it's just not going to be that annoying to scroll down on App Store or within the apps. You know, it's not going to ask you to do reviews for no reason. All right, let's go to mail. Personally, I have notifications off. Luckily, due to my way of life, there's nothing there in my mail that couldn't wait until I access the app manually by doing so here. No, but furthermore, if you go to accounts and you go to fetch new data, highly advise you to turn off push. Similarly to background app refresh, this will not cost the scan if there's mail to be received. Instead, set up a fetch schedule every hour or less if you need to, depends on you know, what kind of sort of work you do. Or go like me and check mail manually when you want to. A couple extra quick tips. If you go to contacts, default account. If you have an issue syncing up your account tax between your Apple devices, try using your Apple ID email instead, which is an iCloud. If you go to phone, respond with text can be customized. Those three messages on the bottom, you know, you might want to check that out. Also, if you go to silence unknown callers, you might want to have it on if you don't like to talk to strangers, for example. And this way it's going to send everything to your voicemail and you're going to have a number which you can contact by message or call them back if you feel like. Messages, send as SMS. Some of you would like to this function, some of you might not, like me. This will prevent foreign rates from happening. For example, if I travel to a foreign country, 
I wouldn't like to be sending SMS. You know, I would be prefer sending uh, data messages go through iMessage. So I have it off constantly. If you go back, let's go to Safari. Let's go to show tab bar, have it off. It's great for iPad, not so much for iPhone. If you rotate your phone like this, it's not going to show tabs on the very, very top, which is nice because you know, iPhone doesn't have much space on there. Open links in background. You might prefer this more, especially if you're into prawn hub. And lastly, prevent cross tra site tracking. Make sure it's on. Let's jump back. And lastly, lastly, one more thing. Was there month photos? Dun, 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 dun. Hide album on. When enabled, the hidden album will appear in the albums tab under utilities. And yeah. All right, guys, this is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And you know, by this time, you should have a phone that is. It's not only looking productive, but it actually acts productive as well. Um, the next video of this series is going to be about Siri. Make sure to check it out. We're going to talk with Siri for a while. And so on, we're going to go to Siri shortcuts, which I'm really excited as well. Yeah, this was Chris Wick. Peace out.